Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Warzone in-depth breakdown. In this series, we go through gameplay, we pause different fighting and rotation scenarios, we break it down, that way you guys can understand what these players are thinking in real time, whether they're doing good things or not, we'll break down both sides of it and teach you guys how to be more effective in decision making as well as gunfights in Warzone. If you do enjoy the video or learn something new, make sure you subscribe to the channel today. Also leave the like on this video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. Also, if you guys are interested in my rebirth breakdowns, we do the rebirth breakdowns exclusively over on Facebook. I will leave a link to that channel in the description below. But without any further ado, go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, here we are spectating C-dubs. I wonder if that's my C-dubs from chat, bro. Spectating C-dubs, and he is in the middle of it right now. He's got two, three teams. There's another team right there on the hill. Oh, yeah, he's he's done. It's a hot drop. Really, honestly, no lessons to be learned in that. But I want everybody right now watching this video, I challenge you guys. I want you all to go for hot drops for the next few days. Land here every single time. That way you guys can practice fighting and practice your movement. You guys are landing on the outskirts for a safer landing. And you're having trouble winning your 1v1s, winning your 1v2s, or just winning gunfights in general. Hot dropping puts you front and center to learning how to improve your gunfighting situation. So if you are wanting to get better at gunfights, hot dropping is the way. Also, it does help you get your PRs as well because this is where you get the majority of your kills. Most PRs, at least with Caldera, they are made by starting in this area. All right, but here we are moving on to Jabroni. We got two fights going on in front of us on the north-hand side, so two separate teams. We could go ahead and utilize this time to push him, but instead we're in a crouch walk. Hey, he got a hit. Proud of you, Jabroni. In situations like this, you have one or two decisions to make. You either A, run away from the entire fight, regroup, go somewhere else, or B, you push the shit in and you try to take advantage of the fact that they're fighting each other. Enemies in combat are always enemies at a disadvantage, especially if they have no idea you're there. That's your only two options. What we're doing right here, going back and forth, crotch walking, shooting at people, not really sure if we're gonna push it or not. What this is actually doing is once they're finished that fight, they'll know we're here and then we absolutely will get destroyed. All right, purple's gonna go ahead and commit. We are down players. Let's go ahead and get these fights won again, not just to kill the players to avoid dying. Not just to kill them to get our kill count up, but to get their money too. That way we can buy our squads back. Questionable. Very questionable. I don't know why. Purple came all the way over here. I don't know why purple came all the way over here to give us $400 just to go all the way back. Don't understand it at all. Also, I believe I saw a buy going off at this buy station. Let me double check this real quick before I slay this guy to the kingdom come excuse me it's been a rough recovery yes okay so they bought back a teammate at this buy station he doesn't know that i'm assuming because he's still going here and he's not watching the enemy it's about to get real rowdy here we have another team fighting another team this is the second opportunity we have to hopefully third party a squad but we're going to go on past the fighting because that's way too much for us to do. We're going to go to this next pie station. But going back to what they should have done originally, it's simple. Purple fly to the buy station they want to go to first. He can mark the targets while he's floating in the air. I'm sure he's coming back with a gun from the gulag. And then as he's floating waiting for us, we could make our way to that buy station, hopefully collapse on those two teams and get four kills out of it. But instead, we're going the more passive route. We're going to try to buy back our dude C-dubs. And again, each player can have their own way of playing. I'm not here trying to tell people that what they're doing is wrong. I'm not here trying to tell people that they're absolute bots. I'm just giving you guys better options on how to get fights practice and also how to rotate in a better way. A lot of players' mindset is they're going to do what they want to do and they're not going to listen to anybody. That's, that's not really a good mindset if you're trying to improve. To pour my sneak energy real quick boys y'all give me a second guys if you haven't tried sneak yet make sure you do so this shit is the truth and it's literally my favorite energy supplement out there by far um no crash and again dude i have the sickness right now and this is the only thing getting me out of bed i haven't even had my coffee for the day because this is the only thing that makes me not feel like dying i'm gonna be honest 
Also, when you purchase Sneak, don't forget to use code SAVAGE if you guys want to get the real top secret formula. All right, here we have a vehicle coming at us right now. Questionable we're not shooting at it. More questionable the enemy's just sitting on it. All right, footsteps are in the building right now. So we have our teammate in the back right-hand corner. We have one footstep below us and someone just got back on. So there are two enemies up close and personal. We're taking shots at the vehicle coming up, which I'm not against. I want you guys to always shoot, but because they're not the immediate threat, the person under us is, I'd be more worried about what's in the house. Otherwise, uh, ourself and Green will probably both die. Oh, he's a TikToker too. Yo, Jabroni, you're gonna be in someone's TikTok, homie. Oh no. Jabroni Ron trying his best to get some shots off on the enemy. I like this gun a lot. In this game, it's not that good, but I do like this gun a lot. C-Dubs coming in, getting a triple kill. C-Dubs the carry. Ooh, we spectated the wrong guy. Four, he got a squad wipe. All right, here we are, heart beating up the hill, trying to find enemies, not really doing a good job of finding any. We're gonna heart beat it one, two, three, four times. We spot an enemy sitting on top of here. Uh, precision inbound. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. And there it goes. Now, right now, with that precision coming in, destroying two players, he needs to be taking advantage of this and, and getting this kill. Oh, bro. Seabass, homie. Now, I was saying that, again, I definitely would like for him to have pushed a lot sooner than he actually did. Let's go ahead and get to a rewind point. All right, so at this point here, two players are down. He probably assumes that he's, that there are still two players alive. He doesn't know Jabroni Tim is already dead, so it's a 1v2 for him in his mind, I'm sure. It's actually 1v1, but we'll go with a 1v2. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, the moment he got both these knocks, he should instantly register that information by the kill feed. And he should work his way from over here all the way to here. You want to try to utilize these ridges to your advantage when fighting people in the tunnel. If he starts moving here right now, he could probably catch our dude out in the open. And get this execute. And again, force it into an actual 1v1 fight. C-Dubs is already safe. So I don't like the idea of him jumping down at any point in time. Because when he jumps, he will have no cover, no concealment. I'd rather him play the edge of this and try to shoot in the tunnel. Or maybe jump down the opposite side and surprise the enemy from behind. Either option is better than what he did. But unfortunately, all this time right here is being wasted. We got five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. And finally, now he's pushing. We've got about 10 seconds from, a, from the time he downed both of us to now. Might not seem like a big deal to a lot of players, but it's a big deal for Seabass. He just lost the match for himself. All right, finally buying our teammate back. We're in a pretty decent area. I would imagine the players would be around here. Still mid-game. We got 40 players up. So the lobbies hadn't died off completely fast, but it's not super packed. All right, there you have some movement over there to the 146. Good job pinging while you're shooting. I love to see that. Got to give him props in that. You, you really don't see that ever. Now, look, this is a position where we're really not in a good spot. The enemy's got an option that he could rotate to the right-hand side. We have purple holding this angle, but I want to help him out. I don't want to be here. I want to go ahead and wrap around and try to join purple on the higher ground so we can get, one, better visual on them, and two, we can have the high ground. We also have orange floating above who probably won't be a part of this fight. A lot of people would think in this position, Solo's got a good spot, but I don't think he does because we don't have, we have an angle on him, but there's a lot of cover between us and the enemy. So we, we really don't have many options of where we can shoot at. I don't like this though. He's getting a little ahead of himself. We see explosions going on right now. That's always uh, when you're driving a vehicle to a bunch of enemies, they do outnumber us as well. At least we assume so, because again, orange is not gonna be any help at all. Purple goes down. We try to jump out on the enemy, but unfortunately, the TTV 
is able to win his 1v1s and he takes us out. Now, again, why would you put yourself in a position to dive into a squad with a vehicle to try to 1v1 or 1v2, whatever the case is, when you can literally work as a squad to get the, to get the job done? I don't understand that at all. Again, we, we had three of us that could utilize this ridge and shoot on these enemies. But again, instead, we just kind of funneled into them one at a time. If we would have been helping Purple instead of grabbing the vehicle and driving towards them, Purple may still be alive and so would we. And it's Jabroni. Tim by his lonesome with no weapons at all. Interesting. Fist that air, daddy. To be honest, I'm not going to include any of this running through. I'm just going to include when he dies because I know it's going <laughs> to... Well, there it is. Well, I'll leave that in the video. How about that? Here we are moving on to Hot Hands Mitch, my man. Coming in with seven kills. We have 24 enemies remaining, nine enemy squads. We're making we're making decent pace. Right now, we're trying to work our way down to the edge of the zone um, and hopefully gate keep these people coming in. One of the squads looking at the mini-map is moving relatively fast. I think they're in a vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and divert our attention to the southeast where there should be one guy running up here. I like the fact that we're playing this, so we're not running in the open. One, pushing ourselves close to the zone, and two, leaving our little bit of cover to go out to the open. A lot of players will try to push the enemy to get that kill, um, when in reality, you might get yourself killed. Trying to hit our headies, we're able to do so at the end, thankfully, because he went prone. Now, the enemy in that position tried to go prone in order to hide behind the rocks for some cover. Unfortunately for him, because of the incline of the hill compared to the rock, it didn't do much for him. I've been in that position too. Can't hate him. Can't hate on him. Guys, if I seem a little stuffy, I apologize. I'm shaking back, but slowly but surely. No idea what's going on with Joe, but he is by himself. Again, look at the separation these squads have. If you guys work together and you play relatively together, you will have a better time in Warzone. I'll say it again. You guys utilize teamwork and stop being Rambo and stop trying to show off to the squad. Or you don't agree with your squad mate, so you go somewhere else you will be a better warzone player and a better warzone team you need to develop you need to find a group of people that you can develop team synergy to you guys are interested in joining a discord where you can utilize a looking for groups pages come join our discord of over thirteen thousand members that way you guys can find teammates who have brain cells and actually want to try to work as a squad to win all right we have a team in front of us at the buy clearly because of the clusters and they are finding someone else i would imagine because they shot the cluster so we have two teams approaching so we're approaching two teams to our north let's see how we uh fight this purple's wrapping to the left hand side we're gonna go straight up on the hill and try to get some shots off i don't want to see orange hugging our butt we don't need teammates shooting behind us that's not what we need we need someone to help get a different angle on the enemy i had a feeling that's what he knew and here we are If at first you don't succeed, try again, right? Hello, they're not peeking the windows. They're not doing anything. We could play it patient, try to wait, but the longer we sit on the edge of the circle, the bigger chance we have of getting third partied. I'd wanna go ahead and fight this squad. Orange is going in by himself. We're gonna follow suit. I don't mind them being on each other's butts for this. Dude, no shot, the enemy already left. Another vehicle approaching us right now really fast. We've got two enemies in this building. Do not go in here. You will die. Oh, my God. Maybe he won't. Maybe he can pull it out. Oh, your boy. Oh, no. Another enemy. Go, 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 go. You got to pop that reload, brother. Get in that berth and separate yourself from the enemy, man. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting nervous for him. I feel like I'm playing right now. Oh, there's that third party we were talking about. You got to get in the Bertha. You got to get in the Bertha. You got to get in the Bertha. I don't like this. All right. So let's just stop this real quick and talk about it real fast. Um, He did a good job fighting those fights. Again, because there were two people in that room, I was worried they'd both be corner camp. And thankfully, one of them was hiding in this little room right here. So when we came through and challenged this guy in the corner, wasn't a big deal. He got really lucky that that last kid that came in the bathroom was a bot and didn't know what the hell was going on.
You gotta give him a little credit. You gotta give him a little credit, man. He's on a rock at a hard place. Just get out of here. Just go. Maybe that's the pussy in me. I don't know. But I think like the best idea is probably get out of here. You'll get pinched. That's exactly what he's doing. Now we have enough money for a squad mate. Um, we might be able to find enough money for two squad members and buy them back. Oh, unfortunately. The real D rich. What an asshole. Just, just sitting over here. Sitting. Sitting and camping. Look at Oscar. Look, he's so happy. I found ammo! Doesn't need anything. Didn't pick up a damn thing. Look at that. And here we are. I was really happy to be spectating Mitch. He he seemed like he was... Uh, unfortunately, that's how the game goes, man. He had 10 kills. He gets killed by a guy with two kills. And he's going to go camp this damn tower. Now, I will not force you guys to watch this shit. Because I would probably bang my head against the monitor if I was forced to. We have been doing nothing for a long time. Look at this. Look at this. We got one, two, three TTVers. Woo. They didn't stand a chance in hell. Now, the problem with the squad was the fact that they sat up for so long, and this is probably what they do every game. They just sit in an area and wait for people to come to them. So when it comes to so when it comes to fighting aggressive players, they literally collapse. Look at that. I don't think these guys shot any of them. Period. Those three guys came through here, Fortnite jumping like it was no one's business, and were just blowing people away. If you guys are struggling with aggressive gameplay, you have to get aggressive. You have to understand the mindset of an aggressive player if you're ever hoping to beat them on a consistent basis. You may get lucky, just like this dude did against Mr. Mitch. Two kills killed the guy with 10 kills. It happens sometimes, but it's not consistent. You guys need to step up your aggression if you're going to be able to hold your own against a team like this. Now, I don't know if they're an action aggressive team. That fight was a little aggressive. <laughs> we'll see. All right, moving on to Vlad. This man's got TV in his name twice. You know he's serious. We've got um, Rocket 10 kills right now. The double barrel shotgun, the Kimbo. And we're just going to go push from, from person to person. Now, this poor guy, I would imagine, is by himself. Oh, no. You know, man, sometimes shit happens. Might be playing up. Might be able to. Oh. You might be able to catch him plating. Oh, suck it, peasant. Piccolino. Piccolino. I looked there because my camera used to be there. Piccolino, what are you doing? What are you. Guys. Guys. I know I'm, I know I'm bowling a little bit, but calling him a peasant. But guess what? It is what it is. Players that sit in towers. I don't care if you're by yourself. You've got to try your best to outplay situations. You have to at least peek. You have to at least rotate. You have to at least move. If you are a player that sits still often, you want to talk about your KD, brother? You want to talk about it? Now, look, this team's camping in this building right here. At least one of them is. He's going to have to come out of there very, very shortly. Camping is not going to reward this man at all. So just know your weapon choice for what you're doing. This guy in this instant, I, met, I I agree with him going in here and getting a little bit aggressive. If they can hold this building, they can gatekeep these guys who are overstaying their welcome. These guys should have rotated a long time ago once they realized we were all in this building shooting at them. They should have pre-rotated and grabbed this bitch, but they didn't. They hesitated. Guess what? They're probably going to die because of it. They may get lucky and get some picks, but that's all they can hope for right now because position-wise... 
they're messed up. Now notice how Vlad is transitioning from enemy to enemy very, very well. Reaction time's on point, accuracy's on point. He's definitely not a bot. Now, if you guys watched yesterday's video, we were spectating a level 550 something, and he was he was bad. Vlad, I say only. Vlad's only level 383, and he's light years ahead of that kid. Ladies and gentlemen, that's GG. Now, real quick, before we move on to the next game, let's go ahead and talk about this rotation and, and the importance of it, right? So when we were up here in top of this tower, right? And this circle was closing in, these guys, this other team should have known they were out of bounds. They should have paid attention. These guys were shooting at them. They were shooting back. They even downed one of our dudes. I believe it was purple they had downed. We were shooting at them. They were shooting back. So they knew where we were at. With that knowledge, again, if I was the enemy team, you got to pre-rotate. You got to get out of there. Otherwise, you end up in the position they were in in that game just now, and you're going to be gatekept, and you have no chance in hell. And that's exactly what it boils down to. No matter how good you are, if you guys are slow on your rotations, if you guys aren't if you guys aren't utilizing your brains to outsmart the enemy, you're going to get destroyed. Make sure your position's good before you decide to camp. Otherwise, you look dumb. All right, here we are spectating microwave. We've got three of us over here in purple, just way off in the distance doing their own thing. They're probably playing with random. That's who it is. It is what it is. I think I hear a footstep. I do hear a footstep. He doesn't hear a footstep though. Surprise. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah, Michael's a sweat lord. I love that. All right, Misty and Cram are going back to diverge and hopefully kill this guy. Now, you got to work together. I don't... The confidence. Michelangelo! The confidence is just emanating off that man's body. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, he's got his stuff together, man. Oh, he caught him plating. No, Cram, damn it. You killed the guy that's painting us a picture. Now, the way Michelangelo played that was, was ballsy, but he had confidence in his gunplay, and he got it done. When he challenged us and jumped out, he didn't know we were here. He does now, and he decided regardless after getting hit once, not knowing that we're not played in, right? You always assume that the enemy is fully played ready to go. Not knowing we were damaged, he still jumps out to challenge a 1v2. Now, he is shooting as well, so he knows it's a 1v2, and he challenges it anyway. And he absolutely shits down our throat. Absolutely. Now, again, he got caught plating up. You can see it right here. Eventually, he's plating, getting shit together, and that's when he gets shot. So that's why he lost that gunfight, I'm imagining, I'm assuming, and it is what it is. All right, approaching the vibe. We got footsteps on the left-hand side. Oh, there we have a Fortnite. Oh, I like this. Oh, man, trying to work some movement. Runs right into another enemy. Cram. Oh, Cram. Plating as he's running around, trying to listen for footsteps. He lets the guy get res. Oh no, another enemy from the left hand side. Hold another squad. Or hold another player, I should say. These guys are just sitting here. Basically playing hide and seek right now. I will say, it's a little fucked up our team left us just now.
and we got the fight one okay a few things i want to notice right off the bat as soon as the fight's over we got a squad over here a squad over here that could potentially both be coming towards us so be aware of that all right so right here again great job just maneuvering himself utilizing movement going to cover bouncing back out there when he realizes the enemy went to the right so did he look at this right here this is when you really break somebody's fucking ankles not only do you break it just on a simple slide to the right but then he hits him with a whole another b hop to the right with a nice 180 and just this guy is clueless Whoops, like oh shit thank god for aim assist the only reason he hit us it's the only reason he hit us he wasn't even looking at us all right so right here i originally thought this was our team that was on me someone started shooting at the enemy that's why i thought it was our team because i thought we were getting some help we were not getting help as a whole other player um but again great job is utilizing movements kind of put himself out there and get some shots off on the enemy instantly breaking away utilizing again angles to separate himself from the enemy once he's there for a split second he decides to break away and get somewhere safe because this is an easy place for us to get pushed easy place for us to get stunned that's why he books it back inside all right we're in desperate need of some plates but here's somebody just look at this what are you doing dude guys y'all see this real quick i know i know not everybody in the world watches my videos i understand that but i feel like at this point everyone needs to understand not not to be floating like this when i tell you guys to pull your parachute and float so you can kind of scan everything that's the very top of the map where you can't be seen once you hit this elevation there's no reason to be in your parachute period period unless you're trying to like stretch a freaking crazy float then i get it it's dangerous but i get it that right there i don't know what the hell he was doing but he's landing next to the teammate somewhere i would imagine there he is so we know there's an enemy over there our teammate marked the enemy over here let the fighting commence He's upstairs with us. Pretty sure he's upstairs. Watch for the shotgun guy. When you get out of this room, bro, we're too close together. Rotate out of here. Oh my god, no, there's one more. That's not the guy with the double barrel. Where's your teammate? Help us out, brother. Don't get the res. Help us out. Ah, uh, all right. So it's, look at this. Ray Tiger, what are you doing? Oh, can you heartbeat it for us, please? Thank God for Red fucking Tiger, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Why our dude Cram was out here just showing the world what he's got. This, this is what our teammate is doing. This is it. Rocking a kilo. I'm mad for you, Graham. I'm pissed off for you, brother. Sitting in a bush, too. Look at this. Still just heart beating. Fuck it. Oh, one more time. Just in case. Just in case. Now, let's go back real quick. So there was a point in this fight where the momentum changed, right? And this was, this was that point. So first off, we're all together. We have, a, we have an outside balcony we could go to to rotate back in to the other rooms. That's what I would have done. Hit the enemies from behind, change your position. Once we down one guy in here, they know we're in here. The fact that we did two is pretty impressive in its own. But at this point here, you let your guy self-res. Don't worry about him. I would change my position completely. Get out of here. But we don't, we overstay. We continue to fight. Now, both of us are up. Both of us need to be plated. Cram was breaking away in the other fight we were spectating when he solo squatted that team. He needs to do the same thing in this scenario. This is a bad spot to be in for a thousand reasons. Stuns, grenades, C4, rocket launchers, double barrel shotguns. Well, you name it, that's a bad reason. So I, I would like to see him get the hell out of here. Unfortunately, he doesn't. And it puts, it puts the enemy on his heel one tap left. 
Nothing you can really do. They may be so close to him. Now, unfortunately, right here, I would have instantly been popping myself, Rez. He may have been able to get it off in time. Maybe not. It's pretty damn close. But regardless, Green should have been holding the angle. He should have been right there on the wall. Right there. He should have been right there on the wall on the right side and had a nice angle on the enemy to shoot him and hopefully help us out. There were two of them, so they probably would have killed him regardless, but it's a better option than what he did, which is stand directly behind us. You see the tracers, right? He stood right behind us, and he went down. No cover, no concealment, no nothing. Play the corners if you guys have corners, guys. Do not just stand out in the open and just expect to face check everybody. It's not going to work. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. All right. So I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm gonna cut all that out so you don't have to watch that shit. But basically, Red Tiger was sat in a bush for money. I'm not even kidding. For like five minutes, didn't do anything. His team backed out. Bless your heart, Cram and company. Um, and as you guys saw, Red Tiger ran right into an enemy and got clapped in the face. Um, Red Tiger suffers from what we call camper's mentality, where he just sits still. He never gets better, and he's always wondering why he's not getting better. Guys, do not be like Red Tiger. Here we are moving. Oh, look! Look, we got some Facebookers, baby. Guys, don't forget to follow my Facebook page, all right? And watch those videos, the Rebirth ones, they're fire. But here we are, um, <laughs> camping. <sighs> There's gonna be a lot of cutting out in this gameplay, I promise you that. All right, well, green has marked somebody and we're just gonna keep holding the staircase with the war machine. All right. All right, after 40,000 people have died, we're finally moving out because the circle's telling us to. Not really a good play. Pretty bad, actually, but it is what it is. Float over into the top. Don't miss that. Oh, you're lucky with the staircase there, brother. Yeah, float. Hold the higher ground. Hold this position. It's not going to be a favorite position for long, but hold it for sure. I would imagine there's another team in this building, too. There's three teams left. This is one. This is the only building left. There's going to be another squad in here. You hear the sun's going off anyway. Oh, no. He dropped the ammo for the... Oh, yeah. He... You might want to get out of that drone, brother. You might want to get out of that drone, brother. He got it down. He got his 10th kill. Wow, that's wow. All right, here we are moving on to 3v3 situation, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this second game did not last as long as I was hoping to. It's maybe a shorter video, but we'll see. All right, so right now, they're going to throw the game. They're going to lose. I'm putting it all on the line. I'm putting that out there right now. We don't even know what's going to happen. We haven't seen nothing. But you know why I know they're going to lose? Because they're not looking around. I understand you want to clear the building. I get it. But you don't need the whole squad to do that. Just have one guy watch the staircase. Make sure you don't get pushed. But play this freaking rooftop right here. Look at this mini map. Play the rooftop. Right? Scan the tanks. Scan the parking lot. Scan the gas station. Scan the hill. Scan. Look around. Because what's going to happen? We're going to hide in here until the circle collapses, most likely. And then once the next zone is, is identified, which is probably going to favor the hill, I doubt it's going to favor any of us. But regardless whether it favors here, 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 anywhere, we're going to have to rotate. The enemies know where we're at because they heard us fighting. Circle small. They can hear a lot. The enemies know where we are. We don't know where the enemies are. So utilize your eyeballs to look around you and try to spot enemies if you can. If we win, it's by the grace of the COD gods, okay? So please get on the rooftop. Like, get on the outside ledge. Oh, or just jump down, whatever. And here we are prone. Not sure why. They, they, nothing has an angle on us right here. But we are. All right, so we know there are enemies over here. We got them identified and imagine the whole squad's over there. It's still not peeking. 
Pick a precision on that'd be smart. What? Tally. Tally, brother. What? Now, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I, I really don't no, I'm not gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I know I think I know what he's thinking. Green marked that area. And I think Green was just saying this is where we need to go, because that's where he's heading. For some reason, Tally was like, he marked it and he just launched it on there. Again, utilize the information we have for sure. We know there's an enemy over here. It's the favored spot. I'd imagine all three over there. If that precision would have been launched in this direction, shoot, that'd be GG. We'd be able to fight that easily. But now here we are. Most of the times we all lose the game, it's because of our own damn fault. Remember that. Or a hacker. One of the two. This is not looking good, brother. This is not looking good, my guy. We do have the war machine still. All right, all right, all right. Good stim. We have no place. This is for all the marbles. It's a 3v1 right now. I really wouldn't worry about the res. I'd worry about the fight in the sniper. It's a 3v1. Technically a 2v1. Oh, we got a resupply. Oh, this, yeah, they actually might win. Damn, I was wrong. I was wrong. One tap. That's GG, boys. Now, look, I'm not a perfect player by any stretch of imagination, but I feel like a lot of players' biggest mistakes are just lacking Battle Royale fundamentals. I've been playing BRs for going on five, maybe even six years now. Um, and most BRs are basically the same when it comes to strategy, rotations, navigating the map, reading the topography of the map, and kind of just analyzing what enemies are doing. If players, you guys, just start thinking a little bit more instead of running and gunning, you will become better Warzone players. It doesn't take, it doesn't take a genius to figure out this game. Most, most of us that are good at this game are stupid anyway. It is what it is. Um, but guys, try to go out there and just think about the things we talk about day in and day out instead of just running and gunning. Start analyzing what enemies are doing, where they're going. Keep your eyes on where they're going so you can see the rotations and catch them out in the open. Do not be like these guys we've been spectating that hide in these buildings to where they can't see where the enemies are going, and then they end up losing. Unlike that last team, that, that team got lucky. Let's just say that. But again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. Let's get this to 700 likes. Subscribe today. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.